All right, welcome to the first of its kind, world-changing manufacturers network. Lisa Ryan has her ears to the ground and her heart in the game. Get ongoing education and new connections right here with Lisa and the manufacturers network. Buckle your seat, listen, and spread the word. Here's Lisa. Hey, it's Lisa Ryan. Welcome to the Manufacturers Network podcast. I'm excited to introduce our guest today, Nitkin Govilla. Nitkin is a management leader, entrepreneur, engineer, and meditation trainer. He is the senior vice president, Air Pacific, and MEA for the French manufacturing group, Serge Ferrari a leader in the flexible composite material sector. Nitkin, welcome to the show. Thank you, Lisa. I'm glad to be here and glad to be speaking with you. My pleasure. So share with us a little bit about your background and what led you ultimately to doing what you're doing with composite materials. In my initial years of my life, obviously, I was uh, born and brought up in India. I studied there. I worked there for nearly six to seven years. And I started my career with paints, with a little bit of few years in the dairy and the food sector. But if I look at at building materials, I think the paints was the first building material I started with. Then at that point of time, I felt I needed to kind of update or upgrade myself. So I felt a need for an international management degree. So I came to Paris to do my MBA at HEC Paris. And that's what opened me up to work in an international environment. So I started working with another French company, which was in home automation. And then early 2007 and 8, I felt the need that uh, this part of the world was kind of... Uh, so at that time, I was working in France also. And then I felt the need that this part of the world was growing and I wanted to be back in Asia. So that brought me to Singapore. So the first few years, uh, I've been now 14 plus years in Singapore. So the first seven plus years i was uh, working for a french company also in roofing and that was also in a very niche uh, specific uh, specific product category in roofing and then this opportunity came which was very unique and different uh, actually to be honest i really did not know about this sector uh, we knew a little bit okay we used to see some shade structures or blinds and awnings but never kind of uh, was in detail with this sector when i was with home automation we used to supply motorization systems for the blinds and awnings so that time i was a little bit exposed to that but beyond that not so much so it was an interesting journey for me to come into this category of business and then that's been now six and a half years now in this this industry i've been handling the role of vice presidents as you mentioned of asia pacific middle east and africa that's nearly a bigger part of the world in terms of geography but it's also a growing part of the business for the company. So I'm based in Singapore, but most of the time traveling across all the countries and regions I'm responsible for. So what has changed as far as these composite materials? What are, why are people moving towards them? And what are some of the benefits of using that as far as architecture and then outdoor equipment applications? Great question, actually, because when I joined and in already it's been six and a half years, as I mentioned, and I also tried to ask this question in terms of what has been evolving. Our company itself is touching 50 years next year. And what I've seen when I look back at the history, I think the main thing has been the technology and the innovation, because if you look at composite materials, how it starts, it may start with a pellet if it's a, if you're using polyester. So you start with those pellets. You crush them, you you make a yarn, and then how you weave the yarn through your own own process, and then coat them. That's what drives the drives the innovation and the quality of the product. So uh, more and more companies, whoever have invested in innovation, whether uh, they are in the interior application or the exterior application, have been always been able to lead the market to bring out uh, continuously new products and uh, based on the needs of the market. So if I look at big structures now, when we talk of big architecture, here I'm talking about stadiums, airports, big shading structures. Earlier, nobody thought it was quite, in maybe in 15, 20 years back, you might call it kind of a tarpaulin or a canvas, you know, depending on which country you are, the, what words are used. But over the years, I think as companies took the lead to make some innovation, and I suppose search Ferrari, as I understand from the history, 
and even today we are one of the leading companies with the innovation we put nearly four to five percent of our turnover in r d uh, and innovation what happened was slowly slowly the minds of the architects and the designers and consultants also changed and evolved and there was a, also a field of study which evolved in engineering which was called tensile or fabric or tensile membrane engineering a lot of uh, colleges came up couple of them op- offering specialization in germany on these courses so that also became a field of study so obviously when those people came out to start their professional careers with architect firms or design firms they started also experimenting that and as the time went along when you see those structures there are still store structures which were done 20 25 years back are still there I think that also created more and more openness for the architects and the designers and the final client to look at it. And over a period of time, they've also realized that one of the very unique ways for every architect or designer is always to have a signature structure made, a very unique one. And composite materials being free flowing have been able to give that, to feed into their imagination to give that. Now, really it boils down to what kind of yarns are you using? Are you using glass yarns? Are you using polyester yarns? Have you had a proven history of projects which have lasted 20, 30, 40 years and are still standing? And, and that's why now it's kind of moving in the lines that it's kind of called as a fifth element of construction. Other than the classical ones, the concrete and other elements which we talk about, they're moving as a fifth element. So people, whenever it looks like a big open structure or a closed structure, even now, Closed structures, people are using membranes and fabrics because they can envelop the building, they can make a facade, they can make a perforated facade or a single skin facades or double skin depending on what their needs are. The structure which you see behind me as my backdrop, it's actually done of a facade material. It's in a public park in Queensland and I actually visited this place last week, uh, incidentally, just to see the project because that gives also a very nice perspective. It's a public space. You can just walk and be uh, uh, underneath it and um, and it really adds to the aesthetics and kind of creates that iconic which goes in very hand in hand with the city's identity also or for that matter, the country's identity. So I think if you ask me in brief, it's a long answer, but I would say innovation, being able to show a proven history that you've done it, you've done it successfully and also being able to you know go and meet the right influencers and tell them what the product can bring and then you have all the test labs and the reports to to complement that to prove that in that sense so i would say these are the three four elements which is leading plus the flexibility of it even with non combustibility or sustainability if companies like us have also taken the lead in that direction so that buildings norms or the local norms of a city or a country are also fulfilled in that direction whether you're going the greener way whether you're going the non-combustible way or you want to have more fire resistant uh, buildings or structures in that sense well yeah and it's because this is audio only people don't see the structure behind you. you but i can verify that it is super cool so just from the sustainability aspect that's great Um, but the creativity because you have the opportunity to work with those flowing materials and really create something that is completely unique and you have a lot more flexibility but let's talk about the sustainability of it so is that using glass and polyester and those different fibers uh, from a sustainability standpoint is that like recycled materials are we able to incorporate our i don't want to call it our waste but basically our waste into these type of projects or you know talk about a little bit about the sustainability aspect of that so here i can say i mean what our company is doing i know there are certain companies which are working on it so we again here we are taking a lead so we have been uh, leaders in developing PVC free products in that sense, which are mainly for interior applications. So instead of somebody wants a polyester coated uh, PVC, polyester yarn and PVC coated product, if they want a PVC free, that's a trend which is going. Because sustainability has also very different meanings in different countries. In certain countries, they want to understand the full back end of the process. 
in the, uh, the value chain of the manufacturing in terms of how the even the raw materials are sourced and the raw material supplier companies what are they doing in terms of their processes so sometimes like in australia you have a concept called pvc best practice which means that vinyl and pvc is not bad but it's more important to see what's the processes followed to make a product we also have a second uh, development which we had in the past and now we are doing it in a very unique way also is to create how do we recycle these membranes and then recycle to what is it recycled to a bad waste in a way that okay it's recycled but still it's not such a usable waste maybe you still can do some applications not related to structures but some other things or are you able to create even the yarns and the pallets which are of good quality so that then you can reuse uh, them to make another fabric which itself will be of good quality so that's the second step the company is working on so earlier we had the recyclability that it created pallets and you could use it for various things but maybe low end usage now we've gone one step ahead to develop a technology where we are working on it and i hopefully think that we should have it launched end of this year early next year where if you are able to also show that the pallets which you create are of high quality then when the yarns which you create and through that the fabric which you'll make will also be for, of better quality and then other elements are what coating process you use what environment are you using to then classify the products in that direction but there is a very very strong effort towards that i think we are aligned with the overall objectives whether of europe or whether of other parts of the world and we definitely have allocated a certain part to ensure that we are moving in that direction as the world is moving or as it's expected of uh, companies like us the other thing that i find really interesting about what you're doing with your materials is the noise the differences between sound and noise and really what you're doing with those internally as far as helping workers to be more focused on what they're doing because you're able to reduce or eliminate some of the day-to-day -day noise. So talk about it from that standpoint. How are your products or how is this technology helping today's manufacturing workers? I would say it's not only the manufacturing workers, obviously that's important, uh, very much important, but it's also the overall, I would say, workspace. So whether it's manufacturing, whether it's an office, whether it's a uh, I would say even a restaurant or a public space, enclosed public space, or for that matter, an enclosed swimming pool or a sports gym or whatever. What happens is that acoustics is, and I prefer to use the word acoustics here because acoustics is a kind of a misunderstood or misconstrued. The moment you talk about acoustics, the first thing people understand is sound reduction or soundproof. And that's where I have learned it, I, I, I did not have this understanding before joining the company that there is a difference between sound and bad noise. What is important is to have a good sound or a, and reduce the effect of bad noise. Now bad noise means that you are in an area, you have a lot of people, there's a reverberation of sound which is happening, which is affecting that even when you go to a restaurant and it's full packed, maybe a Friday evening or a Saturday, you're not even able to hear the person across your table for which you've come for a dinner or 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 whatever now if you have an environment which ensures that those reverberation of the sound that's what the coefficient nrc or the alpha we say noise reduction coefficient is measured in terms of the material then you you're not saying you're making it soundproof it's not like a recording room but what you're actually because recording room also insulates you you don't feel much anything when you're in a recording room this here it's different you remove the effects of the bad noise and you have a good sound so not only you're able to sit comfortably be in a good space you're also able to hear the other person you know whatever the other person is saying and communicate comfortably even if people are around now what's happening is over the years and it still happens there's a lot of effort put towards in an office not only the aesthetics or how do we manage the heat the thermal part the glare part all those elements are being looked at i would say much much more uh, seriously even though there's an element of whether you use an exterior protection outside the window or inside that has its own pluses and minuses but the acoustic part is never looked at and actually when you look at it now i mean and also trying to get people back to office after the covid 
you really becomes pertinent to create a good space that people would want to come back otherwise they were happy in their homes they have created a space of working for the last one and a half years doing these calls like zoom calls or teams calls and um, and then when they come to office they see it's an open space i mean you just may feel suddenly heavy or you know um, uh, or not so comfortable so i feel uh, that's an element i see sometimes gaining but not so much part of it is also lack of information and knowledge available part of it is also maybe there are not so many acousticians which exist who can share the difference between all those elements and part of it is also design and uh, and awareness so the moment all that comes together and we are playing our part when we try to show at different exhibitions or displays or even presentations to architects to talk about this so because the free flowing fabric what that it ensures is it can fit into the environment of the of your design you can envelop it with the lights so if you have a light you can just cover the lights instead of glass or or a milky glass you can just do a fabric nobody will even realize that you can do ceiling baffles you can do panels you can do even the the walls and you can print on it nobody will even realize that there there's a fabric around but it's providing you the acoustic effect of that if you take swimming pools you can do the ceiling underneath any kind of roof it could be a membrane roof it could be a steel roof if you do gyms because the sound gets in a way does not get reflected back so that way it, it improves the whole acoustics of the of the place so now many times when we see stadiums being designed they are always double skin part of it is also because of that the qatar world cup which is going to happen five stadiums have been done by our product there's actually one stadium which has been designed like an bedoua a middle eastern tent where the outside surface is membrane and the inside part is actually done the ceiling with the design of what a tent in middle east inside will look like so actually we designed it from the yarns we did not color it so the yarns itself are of that red brown whitish color to give that tent look from the inside and that's an acoustic fabric which was put inside the top membrane which is also ours to give that effect but also provide the comfort for the spectators who will be there to to watch the game so it's evolving but i think it will still take a bit of time to to have that across yeah when well, it sounds like it's quite an education process because when you were talking about a noid noisy restaurant on a friday or saturday night that totally makes sense because it it detracts from the experience when you can't hear the person across from you but if you go into a manufacturing plant or you go into an office where sound is just not something that we even think about bringing in what would be some signs to look for or how would somebody know that uh, this could be an issue that could be really helped by looking at that uh, the acoustics that they have so the first point as you just mentioned uh, element of education so how as a if we are taking the lead and actually there uh, there are not so many companies who can manufacture fabrics who can give this acoustic properties we have couple of products actually in our range so we have to take a lead in educating so when we talk to architects or consultants or we do our presentations in public forums or different events we ensure that we try to bring that element to educate we cover it in our catalogs and different uh, communication and also now we've also changed the way sometimes we communicate so when we do big events or even exhibition booths we try to create an experience room in that exhibition mm. so where people come and sit inside that space uh, they will feel the difference so that's also way we are trying to do and then obviously we we sometimes tell people that okay let's start with one of your room let's not start with the whole office let's take your meeting room for that matter let's look at it can we do a different way your meeting room and we are happy to support you on that or work with you on that so maybe once they see the difference there then they'll come back to us okay let's relook at the design of the whole office in that sense so so i think it's it's a long effort you're right so communication talking about it you know using case study methods where we've done a lot of projects like this to show that it could be a church also it could be a restaurant also that's why sometimes you know more and more specific very targeted audience specific events are started happening 
so if we decide to participate in that then we definitely try to also bring in those elements to talk about it well and i also see in your background you're a meditation trainer so that mental health of workers is falls right into that category so talk a little bit about that because it sounds like you're doing a lot with the architectures who would then have to sell the concept to the end user yes. but when it comes to the benefits of mental health for that end user whatever that building is uh, how does that work and and what are some success stories that you have experienced so i would say it's still very nascent where people are looking at mental health from the office environment or design environment i think it's still a different category look at so okay one thing which has happened in covid of last few years that's magnified so you have bigger companies having specific hr or specific people focused or departments which have been created of workplace well being and wellness so that's a that's a real positive development which is which has started happening mental health is being talked about also stress is being talked about also breakdowns are being talked about also in companies but it's still connected to an element that uh, it's related to people and somehow i i am not yet able to see a connection that the office environment also could play a part i think it will happen but i suppose it's we are too early for that as of now the fact that at least we are talking about this subject it's a very positive direction because many years back it was not even talked about or it was not even considered good to talk about that at least now we are open about it companies are taking certain actions helping their employees to understand supporting them like i do a lot of weekly uh, meditation sessions with certain companies in singapore virtually but they made it a practice that okay they gave a half an hour option to their employees not forcing them but they have a choice so those kinds of things companies are doing they are also doing other things to help them maintain that ideally it would be nice that the whole thing becomes holistic that even when you design your space you're already thinking of that what colors i use what kind of protection i'm doing outside my glass how i manage the heat how i manage the air conditioning load how i manage the aesthetics or the glare or whatever when i am looking at my screen and the uh, sound or whatever am i creating space where i can have a space for myself when i can just connect with myself either meditate either pray or whatever i do that maybe you know uh, i've heard some companies are creating meditation pods or they've created separate rooms which they call as introspection rooms where people can just walk in whenever they wish to sit quietly for whatever time they wish to and then come back so part of it is happening now the overall integration to combine all those elements maybe it's still uh, i would right. say maybe a little bit uh, away but yes it i think it should happen and in fact but it will take a bit of time it will take a bit of time well and i think it's funny because there's probably a certain percentage of people listening or who have been in manufacturing that, that are thinking there's no way my people would go for that i mean all they care about is showing up and the the money and this meditation they'd never go for it and i would have to beg to differ that when you create the type the type of environment where you're offering these type of things as far as mindfulness meditation self care um letting you as an employer know that we care enough about you to take a look at the acoustics of the building so we're having more a, a calmer environment for you to work in to lessen your stress so just kind of exploring some of these options that we may not have thought about 20 years ago but you are so right that times are changing in these last 2 years of covid where there's so much more emphasis on mental health this is just one more way that we can support our employees absolutely absolutely and i think this will come maybe there will be obviously some uh, good examples uh which will become examples for companies to follow and those good examples also made in the public domain because sometimes there could be some very good things happening but we may not know because companies may just not think about to talk about it because they may just think okay we've done it for our people fine i mean uh, what's there to you know boast to talk about it but i suppose more and more as people or employees or some other people talk about it or they would have observed it i suppose that will also change the way other companies and uh, many other sectors would look at it 
So out of all the things that we talked about today with the composite materials, with the acoustics, if somebody listening today wanted to get started of just changing their building or taking advantage of some of these composite materials, what would be your best tip to get somebody started? Well, I think in that sense, I um, mean, you, anybody who is looking at it um, has to start either with a designer and an architect who would help them basically because, I mean, they can always approach companies like us, depending on uh, some companies may have local uh, teams, some companies may not have, depending on the size of the business. Now, specifically us as Search Ferrari, we would have people or uh, feet on nearly all the big countries of the world. So if tomorrow somebody wishes to know, sometimes it happens. Actually, the sometimes end client comes to us first, just to understand because they have a thing in mind, but they don't know much. So they say, okay, let me talk to a manufacturer first. Maybe they can guide me a composite material company. They can tell me, okay, what things can be done. And once maybe then they have this idea, then they work with their designer and architect or a, or a building engineer to see how it can be or incorporated into a practical concept or a uh, converted to a pr real practical idea that it can be implemented. So that's one way. The other way is obviously good architects or designers or generally people will know about it. So if they say, okay, I'm looking maybe something to do within the my home or office or something outside, I have too much of glass, but and my air conditioning load is too high. Can we do something outside? Because once the heat is inside the glass, okay, you can have the best of the blinds, but there's a limit to what you can do. You still will have to run your air conditioning at full blast. But if you have something which can block 85% of the heat outside, it changes the whole game, you know. I mean, mm. uh, not only it makes it comfortable, it does not block the view, it gives you a good view through and it changes the whole game. So there could be many pathways. It all depends uh, what kind of work somebody is looking for. Nowadays, websites and uh, if you look at specifically our company's website, you'll see it's very inf informative. They can put a request also that they are just looking even for ideas or something they want to do. Somebody from our a local office will get in touch and uh, guide them through on the process. So I think if you know about composite material, that's the way to go, I would say. If you don't know, then a little bit of reading would help to say, OK, I'm sure the person would know what are they looking for, a good working space or a good management of light or energy or maybe acoustics or a nice design of shading for outside then I think uh, you you can get many ideas and then you can start picking who to speak to for that. And if somebody did want to continue the conversation and find out more, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Well, they can write to me. I mean, I'm contactable um, on my email, which is uh, on my company email, which is nitin.govilla at uh, searchferrari.com. So that's one way to contact me or they can actually go to our website www.searchferrari.com and all mostly our bigger countries they have a specific page or they can just go to the contact page put their request and uh, it comes as a lead or a information query to the right uh, people who are there in that area or that country and they will come back uh, directly to that person. Well, Nitkin, thank you so much for being on the show. I, I learned a lot, and I'm sure my listeners did too. I'm glad that you were here. Thank you, Lisa. It's a great opportunity. I mean, uh, I hope uh, if I'm able to add some value to anyone, I'll be really happy about it. And thank you for providing me this opportunity. You're very welcome. Well, I'm Lisa Ryan, and this is the Manufacturers Network Podcast. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Hey, do me a favor. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe and give us a five-star rating. Also, feel free to share the podcast with your friends and colleagues so we can grow the network and connect more fantastic folks just like you. You can either go to the website at manufacturers-network.com or share the podcast on your LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or wherever you and your industry friends hang out. 
The bigger and faster we grow this network, the stronger and deeper community we will have. I appreciate you. Thank you.